We gather under the theme, Building Synergies, Harnessing the Potential of Academia, Government and Industry for Growth. In line with this theme, I would like to address an important subject that we don't emphasize enough, and that is collaborating among all of society in our quest to build a nation that is great and strong. Our collective desire to mold our nation into one that assures freedom, justice, and opportunity for all is without question. Often, however, each segment of our society thinks that the other segments have the responsibility to do more than they are currently doing if this objective is to be achieved. Governments blame industry, academia, and citizens for various things, for not paying enough taxes, for not teaching the right courses, for not creating enough jobs. Industry, on the other hand, blames government for taxing too much, not providing enough support, among others. It also blames citizens for being the ones who don't work diligently enough, even when they get jobs. Academia, on the other hand, blames government, industry, and citizens for not cooperating enough to execute the intelligent academic proposals that are birthed from these great green hills. And as for the citizens, we blame everybody else for why we are here today. Council Chair, the theme for today's graduation reminds us that we need to adopt a new approach, one that is different from the blame and finger pointing that we've operated for a while now. We cannot do the same thing over and over again and expect different results. It's time we adopt an approach of collaboration if we are to advance the course of molding the country into what we truly desire. The fact is that we each have a part to play. Yes, some weightier than others, admittedly. But our parts to play are equitably important. It is only when we each commit to do better at our individual roles, and indeed when we do so, that we can significantly move our nation to become one that is great and strong. Academia is the fertile ground on which knowledge is nurtured and minds are shaped. It's where the bulk of the thought-led solutions to achieving problems should be driven. Government is where the public policy mandate rests. Industry is where the cutting-edge products, services, and proficiencies are developed. And among the citizens is where cooperation and participation to make things happen can be found. Each of us has to admit that we have not done well enough. Each of us has to admit that we have the capacity to do a lot more and to do a lot better than we are currently doing. The world we live in today demands more than just theory. The emerging challenges require adaptability, critical thinking, and the ability to navigate complex challenges. We should equip our graduates with more than theory. The programs we offer in academic institutions must regularly be tweaked to equip our students with the ability to solve the challenges in the world that awaits them. We, in academia, must commit ourselves to deliver this always. The role of academia does not end with awarding degrees. It is crucial for academic institutions such as ours to establish stronger ties with industry and government, fostering collaborations that take the educational experience beyond lecture halls. This would include meaningful internships, research partnerships, and joint initiatives that bridge the gap between theory and practice. By actively engaging with industry and government in this regard, academia can stay attuned to the needs of the job market and equip students with relevant soft and hard skills, thereby enhancing their employability and the ability to create employment for themselves and others. Industry also plays a pivotal role in addressing the capacity and employment challenges that we face today. The private sector is the engine of economic growth and job creation, offering numerous opportunities for employment and entrepreneurship. However, it is crucial for industry to recognize the immense potential of our graduates and embrace a mindset of investment in human capital nurtured in our academic institutions. By collaborating with academic institutions, industry can actively contribute to curriculum development, offer mentorship programs, and provide internships and job placements. This collaboration ensures that the skills imparted in academia will align with the requirements of the job market, resulting in a seamless transition from education to employment. 
Our industries are also encouraged to invest in students through scholarships and grants and in the institute's facilities and infrastructure. This synergy between academia and industry can go a long way in ensuring that our graduates have the holistic education that they need if they are to work effectively. And existing industries will have a good supply of capable human resource for their advancement. Industry leaders can also contribute further by investing in research and development, fostering innovation and exploring emerging sectors. By creating an environment that encourages entrepreneurship and fosters innovation, we can unlock new opportunities and generate sustainable employment for our graduates. We, the citizens, have an even more important role in this new paradigm that we are called to observe. Collaboration means we can't look to industry alone, academia alone, or government alone. Indeed, we can't look to the other three segments of society, even together, without examining what we too ought to do differently. We need to examine the collaborative role the citizen ought to play in this new paradigm. Among other things, this calls for defining the values, the obligations, and the responsibilities of the Ghanaian citizen. And since we draw academics, government officials, and private sector leaders from among the citizens, I dare say this is the major question we need to answer. And in so doing, we shall get the best from all other segments of society. Last but not the least, Council Chair, the government stands to play a very critical role in shaping the landscape. It is our job in government to create the enabling environment that encourages investment, fosters entrepreneurship, and promotes productivity. We must, in all humility, work towards increasing engagement with academia, industry, and citizens to ensure that education and training align with the ever-changing needs of our growing society. Additionally, the onus is on us in government to ensure that the policies and programs that we implement with the taxpayers' money are driven by data, deep analysis, and empirical evidence. Dear graduates, as you step into the world beyond these walls today, I urge you to embrace the power of synergy. Collaborate with industry, engage with government, and continue to seek knowledge and personal growth. Remember that success, your success, is not achieved in isolation, but through collective effort and collaboration. May your journey ahead be filled with success, fulfillment, and a steadfast commitment to building synergies for the betterment of yourselves and our society at large. But chances are that you may forget everything I've said here today. <laughs> if you do forget everything, just like I forgot everything that was said at my graduation, please don't forget these three things. Number one, today's success must remind you that despite the difficulties that you would encounter in the years ahead, you, inside you, is all that is required to conquer. You have conquered till today. If you put in similar, better effort, you will conquer the rest of the challenges that life will throw your way. Number two, your true worth is not today's certificate. It lies in how much contribution you will make to the exercise of making your society a better place. That will be your true worth. And number three, you have a choice between cynicism and hope between negativity and optimism, between complaints and solutions. Some have chosen the path of complaints, cynicism, and negativity. Others have mastered the art of explaining all the problems and pointing accusing fingers daily at everybody else. Others, however, have chosen to be problem solvers. They have chosen to talk less and to do more and to create value for society. Those will be the ones that we will celebrate 10 years from now when we gather for our reunion. They will not be the complainers or the cynics. It will be the optimists, the positivists, and the problem solvers. And I encourage you to join the problem solving group.